Hi everyone, I'm John and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the second pillar of the financial hierarchy. And don't worry if you miss the whole episode on the financial hierarchy. I'm going to include links in the top right for you to go back, understand what is the financial hierarchy and know what is the first pillar. So I'm going to end the video today with reviewing two real life case studies, courtesy of policies that some of the viewers have submitted. Thank you. Thank you. And um, with that, you will actually know how to apply and, you know, understand your own policies better. So stay till the end. As mentioned earlier, today I'm going to cover the second pillar of the financial hierarchy under the foundation of insurance. And this is with regards to medical coverage or more specifically, hospitalization and surgical benefits. So these are the top 10 causes of death in Malaysia. And if you go through the entire list, can you tell me one that has an anomaly compared to the rest? Guessed it yet? It is actually road traffic accidents. Now, why did I wanted to highlight this item to you is because the other nine are actually very, very critical illness related and only one is an anomaly, an accident, right? So, on average, these were the cost of treatment for this critical illness in 2016. And as you can see, uh, Catrack being one of the cheapest, but also uh, within the same list, you see cancer and also kidney failure as among the most expensive, these two, right? So that is the current cost of treatment in 2016, anywhere between 18 to 300,000 for cancer. And I can tell you it's much more today. And the projected cost in 20 years is anywhere between 100 over 1,000 to close to 2 million. For kidney failure, um, I don't know if you guys have friends or family members that actually are diabetic. Uh, they have to go through dialysis treatment and you know it's, it's, it's very costly. They have to be in a dialysis center at least once or twice a month at least. And uh, yeah, it's very expensive treatment and the projected cost is just going to go higher and higher. So... I'm going to show you now the rule of 72. And for those of you who are investors, I'm pretty sure you're very familiar with this rule. For those of you who are not, let me just briefly go through them. The rule of 72 just states that 72 divided by the assumed rate of return is going to show you how much, how long it takes to double your money. Now, John, why are you introducing rule of 72 in a discussion for insurance? The reason why I'm including it is because I'm going to show you how you can use it to calculate medical inflation, the rising medical inflation costs in today's day and age. Okay, so let's go back to the example. Let's just say your assumed rate of return is 8%. 72 divided by 8, you will get 9 years. That means it takes 9 years for whatever money that you put into an investment or a savings account to actually double in amount, right? In the reverse, can we use this to calculate the medical inflation rate in Malaysia and how much it would double in terms of costs in the future? So anyone here want to take a guess what is the medical inflation rate? You can Google it. In the past, it used to be higher. I don't know uh, whether the, the trend is, is it? I, I don't think the trend is going downwards, but it should be going upwards. But the latest I found is actually medical inflation rate in Malaysia is about 9%. Yeah, so this was the latest study that I could get. Uh, it was done by Code Blue 17 June 2022, as most recent I could get. And they revealed that medical inflation in Malaysia is anywhere between 8 to 9%, right? So let's just assume it's 9% and we apply that using the rule of 72. So applying the medical inflation rate of 9%, right? If you use the rule of 72, 72 divided by 9 will give you 8 years. So what this means is that any surgical or hospitalization procedure costs that costs, let's say, a dollar today will double every 8 years. I repeat, double every 8 years. So let's use an example. If a particular treatment costs 100000 in 2022, that means by 2030, 8 years from today, uh, the cost from 100,000 will double to 200,000. Similarly, eight years from 2030, the cost will double from 200,000 to 400,000 and double every eight years. So 
if you're thinking that your medical card limit has a lot, uh, then I would ask you to reconsider and think again because inflation is not a linear curve. It is actually an exponential curve. It's, it's compounding. Uh, it's not linear. <laughs> So I know some among you proponents will argue, uh, but I actually don't need such a high medical limit or medical card because if it exceeds a certain amount, I could just go to a government hospital. True, but I don't know if you have any friends or family members that work for the government uh, medical care system. A lot of the treatment today, especially uh, for very expensive drugs, is to be bought by the patients already, you know. More and more, it's not that $1 bill that you're going to pay. More and more, they're going to say, okay, uh, this, this is a dispensary cheat. Please go to a pharmacy or please go to the dispensary and you have to pay a certain amount. Unless you're a senior civil servant, you may be granted uh, certain privileges uh, in your retirement. But uh, for the ordinary folk out there, I, I can tell you it's a trend that more and more the government cannot heavily subsidize all this treatment. A lot of it will be out of pocket for the patient itself. So the next item you want to look at in your hospitalization and surgical uh, benefits or medical card is actually these four, I would say, very important criteria. Uh. The first one is this thing called an annual limit. Now, what does it mean? It means that how much you can claim per calendar year, the maximum amount of uh, uh, medical coverage you can claim within one calendar year. Right? So if your annual limit is 120,000, that means if your claim amounted to 150,000, you can only claim 120, and then uh, 30,000, the difference between 150 and 120 has to be bought by you. Okay? That's the first one, annual limit. The second thing is this thing called a lifetime limit. So it actually just means what literally what it says, how much can you claim for your entire lifetime? Now, this works in tandem with your annual limit. So Let's just say your lifetime limit is 1.2 million and your annual limit is 120,000. That means if you claim 120,000 in your first year, 120,000 in your second year, 120,000 in your third year, and subsequently for the next 10 years, after 10 years, you would have exhausted your lifetime limit. It becomes zero. So when that happens, that means your medical, medical coverage ceases to exist because you've exhausted your entire lifetime limit and therefore there's no more benefit for you, right? So that's the second one. The third is actually this thing called uh, co-insurance or co-pay. So what this actually means is that how much you yourself as a payer or, or a beneficiary of this hospitalization and surgical benefit card is that how much you have to pay co-host co, co or co-pay with the insurer. So let's just say your medical bill came up to 10,000 ringgit, all right? And this card actually has a co-pay or co-insurance uh, uh, co uh, criteria. So out of 10,000, you would have to fork out 10%. So that means you have to fork out 1,000 ringgit. Now, some insurers have another feature called a deductible. It's a very similar concept to a co-insurance or co-pay. So a deductible literally means every time you get admitted for different, different kind of uh, illnesses or, or, or treatment, you have to pay a fixed amount uh, before the insurer will reimburse you the rest of the amount. So co-insurance, co-pay and deductible, I would generally lump them into uh, the third category. Now the last category or the criteria that you must actually uh, be well aware of is this thing called a specific illness uh, lifetime limit cap. Now what do I mean? So they tell you, let's just say you have a medical card, annual limit of 1 million, lifetime there's no limit. Okay, so that means you can con Claim 1 million this year, 1 million next year, the third year, 1 million, continuously until you pass away. Yes, especially if you have a lifetime, there's no limit to your lifetime limit. That, that, that is how the system works. 1 million, 1 million, 1 million, subject to the limit of your annual limit, right? But in the caveat or a very small fine print, they'll tell you, um, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, while your annual limit is 1 million, your lifetime has no limit, but for specific illnesses, I will insure up to a maximum cap. So they will tell you that, let's say for kidney dialysis or cancer treatment combined, the maximum cap that you can claim for your entire lifetime is 625,000. Even though your annual limit is 1 million, even though your lifetime has no limit. Yeah, so be very wary about uh, those conditions as well because 
if you remember in the earlier part of the video, I mentioned that the two most expensive, the two most expensive critical illness is actually cancer and also kidney treatment. So the insurers also want to limit their risk and exposure. That's why they set aside this lifetime limit for very specific illnesses. Now, this brings us to the most interesting part because now I'm going to show you how to apply them with real life case studies. So thank you to the viewers who submitted some of the policies. I do apologize to a lot of you because even though you submitted your policies, I, I could not you know, uh, feature all of them uh, in the videos. But rest assured, if I see a certain topic that is very related, I'll put them in as a case study so that you, you know it applies to you. Now, in this particular case, uh, this is a standalone medical card. I know it's a bit small, but I just wanted to uh, highlight four important points. Remember the criteria I mentioned, annual limit, lifetime limit, copay, and a specific illness, lifetime limit. So in this person's case, uh, if you look at item 21 and 22, the annual limit for his card is actually 100,000 if it's uh, the 150 ringgit medical plan or 150,000 for the 200 ringgit medical plan. So that is your annual limit. Does he has a lifetime limit? Nope, he has no lifetime limit. So remember earlier I mentioned, if your annual limit is, let's just say 100,000 and you have no lifetime limit, you can continuously claim 100,000 until you, you pass on, right? So that covers the annual limit and the lifetime limit. Now, is there a copay for this medical card? If you look at this, uh, I, I point to you a specific example, outpatient cancer treatment or, okay, item three, hospital supplies and services, item three. Yeah. It says there as charge under the remark or the plan type, right? What does it mean? It means that whatever uh, reasonable uh, hospital charges will be fully re reimbursed by the medical card. There is no going to be sharing of the uh, payment for the treatment. So in this specific, in this specific medical card, there's no copay, right? Um, what about specific illness lifetime limit? If you refer to item 14, you will notice that it says outpatient cancer treatment as charge. So what it means that as charge, it will be subject to the entire, they'll be allowed to claim up to the entire annual and lifetime limit. There is no specific cap for a specific illness like cancer or, or kidney dialysis treatment. Now notice, uh, in the fine print, right, in this table uh, or product disclosure sheet, they, they mention very clearly cancer, kidney uh, as the two examples of illnesses. You, want, you guys want to take a guess why? Because these two are the most expensive treatments, uh, especially in medical treatment costs in Malaysia today. And they had to put that clause uh, up front so that the, uh, the customers know this is exactly what they're getting into, you see. So uh, kudos uh, to this person who actually got this. Uh, the only downside of this medical card, I feel that the annual limit is a bit low because 100,000 today, I don't think is enough to cover one years of uh, chemotherapy treatment or even immunotherapy, God forbid, immunotherapy treatment because it's going to cost way more than that. So this is the second case study I like to show. Uh, this is an investment link medical card compared to the previous one, which was a standalone medical card. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand the differences. I think I will cover it in subsequent topics where I talk about the different genres of uh, insurance. So stay tuned for that video. Um, it's going to be an interesting one, trust me. Um, in this particular person's case, uh, the four criteria again, annual limit, lifetime limit, copay, specific illness, lifetime limit. So I'm going to cover the first two, annual limit, lifetime limit. Uh, as you can see on the bottom left of your screen, you will see overall annual limit, 1.5 million. Overall lifetime limit, no limit. What does this mean? Every year, you can this person can claim 1.5, 1.5, 1.5 until he, he or she kicks the bucket, right? Now, is there a copay? I'm looking through it. Okay, if you see item 5 on the right of your screen, it says hospital supplies and services. It says as charged. And it did not put a, like a 10% copay or whatever. That means that there is no copay for this particular plan, right? Last but not least, specific illness lifetime limit. If you can see, uh, okay, it says here, uh, again, outpatient cancer treatment, outpatient kidney dialysis treatment. It says as charged. That means there is no co-insurance for this particular plan as well. Now, don't worry. 
Um, obviously, I cannot cover every single insurer. Uh, these, by the way, these two were from two different insurers. I've uh, purposely blanked out the name and I've purposely also not uh, used any brands because most importantly, as a financial planner or an insurance planner, what you want is you want to set aside the criteria that suit your client not by getting a product and then trying to explain all the features and benefit and see which one's better. Set the rules of engagement correctly, which are the criteria that are important for a medical uh, or hospitalization, surgical benefit, only then find a plan that suits them, right? So in this case, even for the standalone and the uh, in investment link plan that I've both shown is the, these two case studies, um, the downside of the first plan was a very low annual limit in this, in this particular case, annual limit is 1.5, very, very sufficient. But obviously, as, as medical treatment uh, progresses, uh, cost may also progress. So uh, I highly encourage uh, all of you to review your insurance plans every three to five years so that you can be kept abreast uh, and uh, the plan actually suits your uh, circumstances at that point when you review it, all right? So bonus for you guys, uh, this is the third uh, case study that I'm going to review. Um, this particular person just gave me an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which I don't think was the sufficient <laughs> for me to understand the policy. But anyway, because there was actually a particular, um, what do you call it, product type, I went to, uh, it's something that I've read, uh, come across before and I went to Google it. And this is actually uh, a, plan, a 150 ringgit medical plan. Uh, that person actually put MediSafe Medi in finite 850,000. Now, 850,000 refers to the overall annual limit. Remember the four criteria again? This refers to the overall annual limit. So, uh, uh, kudos to this person. Overall lifetime limit is no limit. So, again, 850,000, you claim until you you can hit the bucket. Lah. So, the rest, uh, the, the copay and everything, um, uh, in this particular uh, plan, there is also no copay, but obviously it can differ from plan to plan because some uh, insurance planners are asked by their clients to try to lower the premiums as much as possible. That's where they will introduce things like copay into the plan. So in these three uh, person or case studies that uh, cases that I reviewed, I think you know um, just refer to these four main criteria. Make sure your plan are aligned. Uh, and sufficiently covering these four main criteria, I think you are in good hands, right? So as a summary, I've covered the second pillar of the medical coverage or more specifically hospitalization and surgical benefits. The three main takeaways uh, for this pillar is that understand medical cost of inflation, understand the rule of 72 so that you know how fast uh, your medical costs will double, right? And last but not least, understand your medical card limits. So I hope you have benefited uh, from the content of this video um, to help you in your financial planning, especially your medical and insurance planning. Uh, do consider subscribing to my channel, give me a like, give me feedback in the comment section and um, I'll leave also a link uh, if you want to have your policy reviewed but your identity redacted or whatever. There's no promises but as I cover more and more topics and I see policies that are relevant to that topic, I'll, I'll bring them up and share them. I'll share my thoughts and opinions on those videos. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.